as a longtime Funimation talent, I am one of the I'm one of the actors who is now going to the next level. And honestly, I'm basing what I'm doing off of the success of Chris Sabat, uh, Christopher Sabat, who's been incredibly successful uh, thanks to Dragon Ball Z. It's over nine thousand opened up Okratron, Okratron 5000, and so, I mean, as of 10 years ago. And now, I would constantly audition for roles, but back when I was auditioning all the time with Funimation, and I would always lose out to Chris. And you would think, wow, you must really hate him. Not at all. I love Chris. He's hilarious. He's brilliant. He's a, a go-getter. He's, he's a fantastic person, a, a great human being. And so, based on his success, and this is also something that we teach, the more successful he became, he can't do all the voices himself, and he always needed other people to do voices. So when he needed another deep voice, he knew exactly who to come to. So that's how I ended up in Halo Wars. That's how I ended up in D. Gray Man. That's how I ended up in um, a lot of different shows. But that it, that same mentality and philosophy is something that I'm a big believer in. It's, Being it's, collaborative rather than competitive. Because right. of, again, as we all... Well, you can be both. Yes, you too. can be both. Of course, we're, we are definitely both. I mean, uh -huh. again, having been in the same fantasy football league for how many years now, you know we are competitive. You're, you're competitive in terms of <laughs> verbally, like, trash-talking the fantasy football. But it's, it's such an... Because there are so many creative types and artists who are going to deal with rejection. Yes. And especially if they operate in a local sphere, they're going yes. to lose out to the same people. Yes. But you've, you've taken what a lot of people are, are going to take as... A defeat or, or a negative experience and you've finagled it into a connection that's, yes. that's opened up other doors. Yes. So if you've got, you know, a student, because I remember when you were first starting to teach me kind of voiceover, the, the thing you'd have us do is you'd have us audition on a daily basis for like 10 roles, 15 roles, mm -hmm. and, and going in understanding that if you get one of these, you're, you're doing pretty good as mm -hmm. someone who starts out. Yes. So when you're beginning your career and you're just dealing with waves of of nose and and rejection how is mentally how do you how do you overcome that because well there are a couple of things number one the point of that is to help you develop a skill set right to again improve your ability to audition to edit to do certain things technically also to make you realize you don't want to constantly compete against a hundred other talent or a two hundred other talent or five hundred other talent for these different national jobs you want to compete against the person or the people that the director wants to go to lunch with before or after they, they go to lunch, who they want to work with, right? right? You want to compete against maybe 10 other people. You want to get on their short list. And so we all have a short list in our day-to-day -day lives of people that we contact every day or whenever we're in a good mood, people we call to just like chat up. Whenever we're in a bad mood, people we call to vent. We have a short list of people that we call whenever we need something done. Mm -hmm. You want to be on the short list of some director, production director, copywriter, uh, talent agency, whoever, where whenever they need something, get on that short list so that you're not competing against these other people. And then when you are losing out to Chris Sabbats or something like that, just realize you're in the you're in that circle where you're being competitive with other great talent. So realize your own greatness and under think of it like a party. Think of it like a birthday party. As long as you get invited to the birthday party, you're going to get a piece of cake. As long as you get invited to the pool party, at some point you get to jump off the diving board. And as long as you're in that circle of either that short list or in that circle of other talent, you're going to be able to help each other to succeed. Team. It's it's interesting because it, it just applies to so many people trying to make it as creatives. My, uh, my girlfriend has been trying to transition from dancing and salsa into more theater. Yes. And the first thing she starts doing is going to these auditions, and we call them cattle calls. Right. Because right. there's there's 60 other dancers exactly. or more, mm -hmm. um, and then they just start making wholesale cuts yes. right down the and it it took a while to have any success because we started shifting towards smaller auditions for smaller studios, mm -hmm. and then you get in with people who are not necessarily at the same level as you, but who are operating in an area where you can get close to them. Yes, you're making those connections. You're right. making those personal connections, and as they find success when they have a need for another person who has this set of skills or these resources, they instantly think of who they can call upon. And mm -hmm. in this case, it would be your girlfriend. Right? And, and it's something like, you, you gotta kinda get over the instant gratif gratification sort of Correct. thing also, because it's, yes. it's sort of a long play. Yes, but it, yeah, definitely, you have to realize that you're not the right voice for every job. You know, sometimes, and again, think of it in terms of when you go to the grocery store. 
right? Your voice is a product now. Now you need to make sure that your voice is the shiniest and the cleanest and the most polished product that it can possibly be. But if somebody is looking to grill out, then they don't necessarily want something that's you know going to be cereal. Or if they're looking for cereal, then they don't want something that's going to be super fancy and that's going to be carbs at night or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but the point is, imagine you're at a grocery store and your voice is one of hundreds of options. Don't take it personally if somebody walks down the aisle and doesn't pick you. Right? It's different from dating, which is what I have to explain to students when they're first starting out. And it's the whole, why didn't they pick me? Uh, yeah. You know, like, they didn't Absolutely. call. You know, something like that. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. Yeah. And it's um, very easy to get stuck in that negative yes, feedback loop yes, of yes, self-doubt yes, and self-pity. And it's yes. so easy to just propagate that yes. and then reinforce it Yes, that a lot of people get trapped in that. Very true. And so actually that's what I tell my students every single time they come in through the door. Number one, this is a safe, fun, and creative place for you to be. Uh, but number two, the things that I teach my students are confidence. So they can be confident and be confident in just about any situation. And then also self-awareness so that they can be aware of their different voices, their strengths, their weaknesses, their areas of opportunity, ways for them to improve. But uh, definitely they need to toughen themselves up because they need to understand that it's a product.